the Joe Rogan experience. Gravity. This is one thing that I want to You still hooked to hook up on gravity. Yes. Okay. I'm always hooked up on gravity. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, as you should be. The, well, since we've talked last, I've been reading a lot about it, and one of the things that confuses me the most is that we don't really understand what gravity is. We know its effects. We can measure them. We know how to measure them. We know what that mass is involved, but we don't really know what gravity is. There's a similar question in the book, but they got a little more philosophical than you just did. But they both lean philosophical. It's Science can describe how gravity works, but can they describe why it works? Can we? So this is the how, why yeah. duality here. And allow me to just answer it from a how, why point of view, and then we can apply it to gravity okay. after I say that. Um, in science, if we can describe how something works and predict its future behavior, we claim to understand it and we move on. You can ask deeper question about it. Why is there gravity? What is the meaning? What is the purpose? And go ahead, but I'm good with what I've done, and I can land a spacecraft on Mars inside of a crater in a hole-in-one using my understanding of gravity, so I'm pretty good with it, okay? So I'm not distracted by the more philosophical side of that. Why does it work? Okay. Einstein... So, so Newton was deeply puzzled by how you can have something called, in which he coined the phrase, action at a distance, okay? He wrote down the equation that worked. He wrote down the equation, the moon goes around the earth, earth goes around the sun, the moons of Jupiter go around Jupiter. He accurately described that with his equations of gravity, okay? He said... One day, I think we're going to find some way that they're connecting to each other, but I don't know what that is right now, but I know my equations work. He called it spooky. It was spooky to him. That's his word. Spooky action at a distance. All right. Fast forward 300 years. 300? No. Fast forward 230 years. Get to Albert Einstein. Um, Gravity is the curvature of space and time. And you're moving on the curvature of that fabric. That's gravity. Oh my gosh, is it even a force then? Is it even, so there's no need to think of it as an action at a distance. And in a phrase um, first uttered by, I think it was John Archibald Wheeler, a student of Einstein. And I learned relativity from John Archibald Wheeler. In fact, that's where I met my wife in relativity class in graduate school. It's space, Uh, so matter tells space how to curve, space tells matter how to move. It moves along the curvature of space. You don't need an action at a distance. There is no action. It It can't do anything else but do that. It's like you have a funnel and you take a ball and you roll it on the funnel. The ball can only do what that funnel tells it to do. And it'll circ- if you give it a sideways motion, it'll st- start spinning around. There's no magic hand coming in there. It is following the curvature of its space-time continuum, this construct that you provided for it. So now, I can describe what gravity is doing. I even have a mechanism for it. Are you going to still ask me why is there gravity? Is that answer not fulfilling enough to you, even in the why department? You can say, well, why would a particle curve space? You can just keep doing that. That's fine. But is there a point where where you'll be satisfied with the answer? Oh, that answers my why. I can say, well, why did this half liter of water drop off the edge here. Well, it's no longer the forces are imbalanced. And it's a, no, but why did it fall? Well, there's nothing holding it up. Why did it? There's a point where it's not especially productive to continue to think about the world that way. Because I, I, what, I'm, what I'm claiming is answers to the how, when you understand the how enough, are tantamount to having answered the why question. That's, all, that's what I'm telling Tantamount you. Tantamount in terms of your ability to measure it and accurately use it. 
Correct. So we can say, okay, but isn't it still you got a bald curious? head. We can say, well, why did you go bald? Well, okay, the hair follicles at a, when you start in your late twenties and early, when did you go bald? When did you start losing your hair? Probably late twenties, early thirties. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's common. If you if you have your hair when you're thirty, you'll probably have it for the rest of your life. That's the how that goes. You start losing it up right going up till you're thirty. So you can say, well, the hair follicle begins to not producing the, the the keratin or whatever. We get the explanation. Then you say, well, why does the hair follicle stop doing that? Then you say, oh, well, because the DNA has it pre-coded about the hair kind of thing. Well, why does the DNA have the hair? Well, because it, so. Right, but we know far more about how and why people go bald than we do about what gravity really is, correct? I'm telling you gravity really is the curvature of space and time. That gets us the Big Bang and everything we've ever the known and loved. It's space and time, but it's also based on mass, right? It's based on the amount of it, mass. Any concentration of matter and energy and or energy will curve the fabric of space and time. And the more and, mass, and, and, and the, the more movement gravity. of matter on that fabric of space and time, we call gravity. And I'm good with that. Okay, but you seem a little oddly defensive about something that's scientific. No, I have to say I'm good with the. But you, you, you are because you're kind of defending it. No, you can say, you're well, de why does matter? Why do you need to know why? No, <laughs> why That's what does? You're no, I'm saying, why does matter and energy curve the fabric of space and time? You, you can ask that. Okay, why? And I, I don't have an answer for that. I can say... Well, that's all I'm asking. Well, no, what, I, what I'm telling you is... Okay, you don't need to I know why. I got you to the point. Right. We had to walk to that point. Yes. Where your why got unanswered. I understand that. But, but before we got to that point, I answered otherwise. But I'm not disputing that. Good, good. So what I'm telling you is that I can answer your why question most of the time. But then you'll come back to a point where there's a point where there's the why doesn't have the answer. So you say, why did it fall? I say there's a force of gravity operating on it. Why did it fall that way? Because of the curvature of space and time. I'm answering your whys. I understand. Then, well, why does matter and energy curve space and time? Okay, that's a frontier. We're still working on that. But that's all I'm asking. That's good. That's fine. But you are a man of science. So you're, you are a person that should probably embrace whys. Except th many people who ask why questions, they really want to know purpose. Oh, I'm not asking purpose. Good. Well, then that distinguishes you curious. from many other people who ask why questions. Oh, okay. I don't yeah. think I don't know if there's a yeah, purpose like, for anything. Why did you bang the table? I was angry. That's right. pur there's yeah, a purpose behind it. That okay. Seems... So, so yeah. So if your why is just a curiosity of what's going on, uh, that's one thing. If you are inquiring about purpose, then it's theological. Okay, because when you're theological, yeah, I'm not. then religions give purpose to life. Clearly I'm not doing that. Right. But I, I just think it's amazing that something that's such a, a massive part of life on this planet that we stayed glued to the ground because of gravity. Can you pull up my Instagram account? This, I, I only post- You have an uh, Instagram account now? Because you had a fake one for a while. Yeah, yeah. I, a I took it over. a friend of mine, actually. I know the I, guy. I took it over. He gave it to you? Oh, do the guy who had it? Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, actually, I sorry. I, I went to Instagram and said, I, I, people think this is a real account and it's not. Can I have it back? And oh. if, 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 if it's an account that's an imposter and yes. followers don't know it, th it's illegal. Right. So uh, so there's there's one that says fan of Neil Tyson. Yes. And that's a different one. Okay. That's the guy okay. I know. So I only post art house photos, okay, that I've taken, most of which I've taken. So just scroll down and look for Muscle Beach. There it is. Click on that. Okay, so here's my cap. Go to my caption. Go full screen on that. Remember my caption. Okay. For most of our life on Earth, we either resist or succumb to the force of gravity. At Muscle Beach, gravity loses every time. That's I'm not true. <laughs> I was proud of that caption. You, you call would, me out on that caption. That's nonsense. Uh. <laughs> gravity never loses. <laughs> Gravity doesn't even have like little tiny losses. <laughs> it's not like there's a war and gravity loses a battle. For those just listening to this, so I was at I was in Venice, California, and the yes. sun was setting behind some guy who was doing who was doing um, uh, uh, hand presses. Hand presses suspended up yes. on the chin up bar, mm -hmm. right? And it was real. So cool. and it was cool. He was silhouetted. There's a palm tree. There's the beach. Yeah. He's there. Gravity's gonna beat that motherfucker. Let me tell you. Eventually, but while he's <laughs> it, while he's there. 
He's conquering gravity. Mm, Are you getting too old? You haven't conquered no. gravity lately. No, I work out all the time. I'm not buying it. <laughs> Sick, I ain't conquering shit. He's pulling rank you now. Know? He says, I work out and you don't because I see your no, middle-aged man belly. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, when I've talked to other astrophysicists and scientists. Wait, wait, let me ask. Are these conversations supposed to have a, like a, a, a theme or a purpose? Or is it just... You sit there and just whatever comes to your head, you send my Who, way. You and me? Yeah. Well, clearly, it's just whatever comes <laughs> okay, to my head. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. On, How man. do you say you this episode agenda? is about? You can't say that. I don't ever do that. You don't do that. Okay, fine. Well, it's just episode s- number. Secret to my success. <laughs> is that I don't yeah, they, have a purpose. You got no, oblig- no well, commitments. Well, Good. how the fuck could I ever have a thread? Think about all the different people that yeah, I have here. of course, here. of course. It's like impossible. Of course. Between fighters and scientists and right. Scholars right. and crackpots. There's like a, a, a bunch of different people coming through here, man. I can't have any agenda. All right. I mean, that's probably the only reason why this thing is ex- successful as it is. <laughs> but that's a weird one for people. That this one thing that is so powerful. What? What is? Oh, gravity. gravity. That's a weird one for people. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it gets... seems like you're frustrated by all the various questions. But no, it seems no, like no. You seem a little, little defensive there. Am I right? No, because I you thought that? I thought you were taking your why to ultimately mean no, no, uh, no. purpose. If it's just why, I'm I'm claiming that many responses to how are also responses to a why. Mm-hmm. That that's that's the point I'm making, and I don't like splitting definitions. Do you um, think we'll ultimately understand gravity? I think we do. That's why we can land things on Mars. Well, we understand I think we do, effects. which is why your cell phone gets time from GPS satellites that is pre-corrected for Einstein's general theory of relativity because they're in a different gravitational field than you in orbit than you are on Earth's surface. Dun, dun, dun. We got this. You're getting angry. <laughs> <laughs>